This week at Starbase brings an intense flow of progress, with Mega Bay 2 nearing its completion, new ground system equipment making its way to the launch site, and Ship 28 getting a festive rollout ahead of its next testing campaign. Now let's dig in. One of the cryo tanks from the Sanchez site was loaded onto an SPMT and driven down Highway 4 to one of SpaceX's new storage yards near the Massey's test site. Work on both Mega Bays continued this week. Mega Bay 1 is being modified for a door to close the structure to the elements. Ventilation grates are being added to the top to evacuate exhaust gases from the facility. On the second Mega Bay, glaziers have continued to wrap up the office level in cladding and their work is almost done. Concrete work at the new launch site gate is nearing completion and the cast in the new beams from the work has been removed. Behind the gateway to Mars sign, rebar for another concrete slab has been put in place and fresh concrete for the grounds in front of the gate have been poured and finished. Installation and repair work has continued on the launch mount and the integration tower this week, which saw the chopsticks raised and their range of motion checked. New supporting framework for various subsystems has been going in as well. The ship quick disconnect arm has been receiving a lot of attention, of which the quick disconnect arm panel received the lion's share of effort to repair a damaged actuator. Less visible has been the tower side of the arm, where new scaffolding has been put in for workers to repair or modify the structure. The orbital launch mount's upper surface remains fully enclosed in scaffolding and has been decked out in lights for the holiday season. SpaceX's LR-11000 was relocated to the launch tower on Sunday and attached to the ship quick disconnect, lifting it up off the tower's arm so crews could repair a damaged hydraulic piston. A new vertical storage tank was relocated from Sanchez to the launch site on Monday as crews continue to revise and rebuild the launch site propellant storage and handling infrastructure. A concrete pump truck was at work near the recently rebuilt ground fabrication building, laying down a pad outside the facility. Multiple loads of steel for the Star Factory expansion were delivered to the build site, starting with smaller parts and followed by a large beam on an oversized load trailer. The steel proved to be a little too large at one point as a SpaceX transportation van sideswiped the steel beam, leaving the van with at least one broken window. Over at Massey's, the B7.1 test article was cut up and scrapped. Meanwhile, at the Sanchez site, Ship 26 was disconnected from the crane and moved back next to the other ships in the rocket garden. Years of development and evolving plans have made the original suborbital testing infrastructure obsolete, and crews began dismantling Test Stand A on Tuesday. Demolition started with plasma torches, cutting up pipes, support structures, and other parts that could help hold the pad together. Once the pipework and other supporting elements were cut out, a bucket excavator scraped them off of the structure. The ship quick disconnect panel stand was the first major piece to be knocked down after it was cut to fall into the center of the stand. With the test stand down to its frame now, workers cut large gaps into the structure to make sure it would separate cleanly. Once the beams were compromised, workers began cutting the columns so the remaining parts could be knocked down. Repairs on the ship quick disconnect arm were finished by Tuesday and the Liber LR-11000 was detached from the armature. The first new column for the next segment of the Star Factory expansion was installed, featuring new double column sections connected with open truss webbing. Inside Mega Bay 1, Booster 13's liquid oxygen tank is nearing completion and was lifted off of the welding turntable. Back at the launch site, crews began dismantling the remaining structure of Test Stand A, cutting through the remaining supports before pushing each leg over to be cleared out and scrapped. The Massey's test site continues to be busy with projects as SpaceX continues to expand and develop their capabilities at the former gun range. Exterior cladding has begun on the new warehouse and office space, and large insulation panels mean that this will be a climate-controlled structure. A new large white water tank, seemingly identical to the one recently built at Sanchez, was added to the facilities. Meanwhile, the payload bay test article S24.2 was hooked up to the on-site crane for removal. 
After a short four months of life, the pipework building that was used to fabricate new assemblies for the orbital launch site's propellant farm was demolished. A bucket excavator's claw made quick work of the structure, clearing the way for future uses of the area. The remaining Star Factory expansion columns for the nose cone hall were raised into position, completing the section of the building after being delayed by a construction accident. With the columns in place now, the previously removed steel beam for Star Factory was ready to be reinstalled. After the last leg segments were cut out, the remains of Test Stand A were toppled over, closing out a storied chapter in the history of the Starship development program. Workers began decorating the self-propelled modular transporter for a Christmas-themed rollout, including lights, a tree, a singing Santa Claus, and more. Ship 30 was moved out of the high bay, clearing the way for Ship 28 ahead of its rollout to the launch complex. It took a few more hours for everything to be ready for Ship 28, which rolled out of the high bay on Thursday morning on a very festive pair of SPMTs. Ship 28 began its trip to the launch complex with three snowmen and a Santa waving to workers and viewers as the ship rolled out for a static fire testing. Ship 28 is expected to fly on Integrated Flight Test 3. Starship 28 and its festive transport finished the trip down Highway 4 an hour later and entered the launch complex setting course for Pad B. SpaceX's LR-11000 was quickly attached to Ship 28, and a few hours later the ship was lifted onto Test Stand B for its pre-flight test campaign. Ship 29 and 30, which are mostly complete and waiting for their own test campaigns, waited outside High Bay after 30 was moved to make room for Ship 28's rollout, and 29 was moved later to rearrange the ships still in the building. While Ship 28 was being placed on Pad B, Starship 30 began to be rolled back into the high bay while Ship 29 waited its turn outside. Two hours later, Ship 29 followed suit, rejoining the two remaining ships inside the building as they await future flight preparations. With Ship 28 set up on the test stand, workers began hooking up the ground support equipment to the new Starship, providing power, data, pressurization, and propellant feeds for the rocket. While Ship 28 was setting up at the pad, the festive SPMT set beside the ship on standby just in case there was an issue and the ship needed to roll back. With the wall columns in place now, the final prefabricated section of the roof structure was installed for this phase of the Star Factory expansion, leaving just some interconnecting roof steel and the wall cladding remaining structurally. Over at the new launch site gate, the cast-in-place beam was painted and steel components have been bolted into the top of the beam as construction work continues to prepare the new entrance for use. Crane operations were apparently earning their qualifications for the bridge cranes inside the megabays, navigating boxes through an obstacle course. Demolition of the pipework building was completed by Thursday and the remains were sorted for scrapping. Over in Florida, Blue Origin's breakover fixture, a dockside fixture that will be used to lay their new Glenn rockets down for transport, was tested Friday. Bob returned to port early on Saturday with both fairing halves on deck from the Starlink Group 6-33 mission, setting up at the docks to unload its cargo. To keep pace with the launch schedule, Bob headed back out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-34 mission just a few hours later. Crosby Skipper returned to port with just read the instructions and Falcon 9 Booster 1077, which launched Starlink 6-33 the previous week. Early Sunday morning, we saw Falcon Heavy being laid down at Launch Complex 39A. The upcoming USSF-52 mission will be launching an X-37B into its highest orbit yet. Falcon 9 Booster 1077 was lifted off just read the instructions and placed onto the dockside stands for stowage and transport back to Roberts Road. Falcon Heavy was raised vertical again ahead of an expected Monday launch attempt, but the launch was ultimately scrubbed and postponed to no earlier than the 28th. After a few days at dockside, Booster 1077 was ready to be laid horizontal and placed on the transport stand for its return to Hangar X for refurbishment. Thursday was the peak of the annual Gemini meteor shower, leaving streaks through the low clouds across the night sky as caught here on our Cape Cam. 
And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.